Hey guys, it's Mike from Adano, and today I'm going to walk you through building your first modular dynamic financial model. Now the model we're going to build today is going to be live linked to zero, but the exact same steps would be taken to build a model linked to QuickBooks, Myob or Sage, and very similar steps would be taken to build a model linked to any accounting package from which you can export your income statement and balance sheet data. Now before diving in, we recommend having a look at some of the example models in the platform. If you go to the Madano tab, open menu, example models, there's a wide range of example models. And if you open, for example, the one financial model example, it'll give you a great understanding of what a model looks like when it's complete. Now this model is great in that it contains some beautiful dashboards and it also contains a full integrated financial model. So you can actually work through and understand how the financial modeling assumptions are entered, how they flow through to the financial statements and how they are then presented on the dashboards. And importantly, get your head around how the hyperlink system works. You can see I'm clicking on the table of contents hyperlinks. And to get back, I'm clicking on the hyperlink in cell A1 of most sheets. Now, something else you might want to do before you dive in is change your theme. Now, by default, the theme in Madano is the default Excel colors for charts, which, to be honest, doesn't look particularly good. So Madano contains a whole range of themes that if you access via the Madano tab options menu, you can import from the bottom of the options dialog box. Now, my personal favorite at the moment is the Madonna Impact theme. It contains great dashboard colors, but you can customize and create your own themes from scratch. The defaults are a great starting point, though, because there are a lot of different settings and often is quite hard to create a really nice looking theme. So I'm just going to import that theme for the purposes of this demonstration and then click OK. So every model I now build will be updated to reflect that theme. Now, before starting building this model, I'm going to close everything other than an empty workbook just so Excel isn't working too hard. And then I'm going to start by choosing a dynamic template. Now we call them dynamic templates because they're modular and scalable, which you'll see throughout this demo. If you go to the Madano tab, new menu, dynamic template, you'll see there are a whole range when they're in summary view, a whole range of different libraries. And each of these has a whole range of templates within them. So they're around about 80,000 templates at the time of me recording this video. We're going to start with the one financial model template. Click next and you can see straight away there are a whole lot of different charts of accounts. Now, I'd strongly recommend clicking on the user guide. And if you don't intend even on doing some training, just looking at the differences between these charts of accounts. The main differences really are whether or not you have cost of goods sold or direct costs and whether or not you want to model salaries and wages in real detail. Uh, if you wanted to model salaries and wages in detail and have COGS, you might go chart of account six. A lot of, a lot of times we don't bother doing salaries and wages in detail, so we might use chart of accounts five, which is what I'm going to use today. So the business we're going to model today is, is a hypothetical cereals company called Twisted Cereals, which we've put in zero, which I'll show you in a moment. And therefore, I'm going to use Chart of Accounts 5. So if I go back into Excel, I'm going to select Chart of Accounts 5, open that. I'm not going to bother with GST because we don't have it in the demo data, but you probably will have sales taxes or GST in your model. But I'm going to click OK, and that's going to open the template. It should ask me whether I want to change my theme, which it does, and it's going to put that Madano Impact theme in. And now I'm ready to go. Okay, the first thing you need to do is set the time series assumptions in the model. So if you see in the appendices of this model, there's the time series assumptions. In this case, I'm going to include 36 months in this model because you need at least 12 months of historical data so you can do year and year comparisons. And I'm also going to include, say, five months of data for the current financial year for this model. Now, the, the model we actually have for this business is a model we've uploaded to zero. It's a demo data company we've put in zero. It contains data from January 2020 through till June 2021. So it contains 18 months of data. I'm going to start by building a model with, say, 17 months in it and then show you how to roll that forward. So the last model, the last period I'm going to import is going to be this, this May 2021 number with NPAT of 115.12. Now, the important thing to bear in mind here is that I have the sufficient number of periods. So I'm going to make the model 36 months in total. And this is going to extend the model to include 36 months of total periods, historical and forecast. So that's the first step I'm going to take, after which I'm then going to set the number of historical data periods to allow for data coming in from January 2020 through till May 2021. Once I've done that, I'm going to put the domination in as thousands. I'm going to leave, I'm going to put the first financial year in as 2020. And then I'm going to put the last historical month as May 2021. Okay, so after I've done this, you'll see the whole model update. It's one of the beautiful things about Madonna. You don't need to worry about time series, duration, or periodicities. You just, you just lock it in and it automatically updates it. So you see now, I now have my historical income statement, which has historical data for 17 months from, from January 2020 till May 2021. And same with my historical balance sheet. And then if I go to my forecasts, 
which is say, for example, my revenue expense forecasts, they start in June 2021. And if I go to my all periods financial statements, I now have all periods financials for 36, 36 months. Now, if I took that back and went to my income statement summary dashboard, it's got the current year with three, five historical periods and seven forecast periods with year on year comparisons and year to date analysis. Okay, so I'm now ready to import my historical data. Now to live link your financial model, the first thing you need to do is go into your Medano account and go to the connection section of your Medano account, which is under administration, and make sure you connect your accounting package to your Medano account. In this case, I'm using Zero. I have a Twisted Serials. This is a hypothetical company we've included, and I'd like to connect to that. So if I'm already linked into Zero, I can connect the connect the connect to Zero button. I can click that, and automatically it will ask me which organization. This one's already connected, so I'm going to click Connect, and you'll see the the organization will appear in your list of connections in Zero in in, in Medano. And once I've done that, I can then go back into Excel, go to the historical income statement. Click on, go to the Medano tab and click on import assumptions. And you'll see that that organization will now be available as an import source. So if I, if I click connected organization as the source of the import and click next, you can see it's asking, it's telling me let's import data for all periods because there's nothing behind. I need to make sure I've got an assumptions mapping file selected here, which is going to, that's going to record the mapping of your data out of your accounting package into your financial model. I can click next. And this is going to go and get that 17 months worth of data from my zero package. Now, the important thing to bear in mind is that your zero data is often not amenable to building a great financial model. Uh, often bookkeepers aren't sitting there thinking about driver-based forecasting. So in this case, I've got a pretty clean model because it's a demo. In your case, you're going to want to spend some time thinking about your allocations of data. Now, if your data is really good, often the best place to start is by clicking on this auto mapping tool, holding down the shift key. And what that will do is auto map based on the classifications in zero and then delete any unnecessary categories. So you effectively automatically allocate the, the accounts from zero into your financial model, which you can see it's done in the background. But you do always then need to work through these. Now, this is obviously my target end pad is correct. You can see here my target and my actual are the same. If I scroll down, I can check other periods by either clicking on this or by using the right and left arrows. And you see if I, if I go to the top and click right and left, you can see that's February, March, April, May, and you can check the difference is fine for each. But you might not necessarily be happy with the classification of the different allocations of accounts. So in this case, for example, if I wanted to put advertising as one account, I could go in here and type advertising here. I could take television and media advertising and drop that on top. And you'll see in the background, it's going to get rid of the television and media advertising category. It's going to map both of those together onto that one advertising category. And there's a many to one map. Now, you might want to do that, for example, if you have 20 operating expenditure categories, and you want to map them to five driver based categories. But that's very handy. Once you once you get that right, you'll never have to do it again if you unless you change your chart of accounts. I'm also going to change in this case the conversion factor to thousands because I don't want my financial model to have dollars in it when I'm talking sort of millions of dollars of revenue. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm just going to do import, and I will import my data. Now here it's going to say to me, do you also want to link in data to your balance sheet because it rec it's recognizing I've also got a balance sheet, and I can go through and do the exact same process, create another mapping file and link in data from my balance sheet. And this process, we call it live linking because once you've linked your data to your organization in your Medano account, which is linked to your accounting package, I'm just going to click on the auto map here again. Once you've done this and, you, and you've mapped the data and reconciled it, going forward, when you roll forward your model, it'll automatically update to include the new data that's available when your model is rolled forward. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. So you can see what this is doing is it's mapping these based on their classifications in zero, which again, you need to double check before you import. Um, and then it's removing any unnecessary categories. So it's now mapped my target. My target to actual is the same. If I actually run the report in zero, this would be my eight, eight million. I've got my thousand conversion factor that's carried through my eight million nine hundred sixty two thousand of net assets, which is down here is 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 equal to what it is in zero. OK, so I can import that. And now I have my model live links. Okay, so if, if I go and check now, I go to my income statement summary, you can see I now have my historical data coming through. I don't have any forecasts because I haven't put any through yet, but my model is now live linked and I can go forward and start doing my forecasts. Okay, so once you've imported your historical data and you've live linked your model, you need to put in your forecast assumptions. This is one of the things that distinguishes Medano from a lot of packages is that there really is no limit as to what you can include in your forecast. Now, by default, the numbers in here are just based on amounts. So I could just type in numbers myself or copy and paste those across. I'm just going to replace this revenue forecast from web 
with a, say, year on year growth rates module just to get some numbers in. We're going to have a, a subsequent video that's going to go through customizing because you can obviously customize every element of this. For the time being, I'm just going to put revenue year on year growth rates, put this through, and then I'm just going to put, say, a 10%. 10% year on year growth rate on all of those, which is obviously going to grow up based on the, the equivalent period from the from the prior year. So I'm just going to put 10% on those on every single period. I'm just going to put in a profit margin of say 25% just to get some numbers in. And then for my operating expenditure, I'm just going to go and you'll see, you'll see by the way, we've got advertising as one, one line item, even though in zero it was two. We put that through. And after I've done that, I can now go to my income statement and I've now got my forecasts, my historical, and I've got, I've got my entire 12 months worth of data. And this is the rolling nature of this. This is my current year. I can, I can compare with last year. You can see I've got 10% growth on last year for this, which, which is obviously because I put those assumptions in. And year to date, last year comparison, net profit after tax, this year, last year, next year. And that's the benefit of having 36 months. You can look forwards and backwards and do side-by-side -side comparisons of months. Okay, now this is where you would then dive in and start customizing your financial model. Um, you would go and customize all the forecasts and the drivers. You see, I've got an alert and inventory because I haven't even entered all my assumptions, but that's not what this, this, this video is about. This video is about getting your model up and running. Now, the last thing I want to demonstrate in this video is rolling forward your model. To, to roll forward this model, you can see at the moment I have data up until the end of May, which I imported, May 21. Let's assume you want to roll the model forward and you say, okay, it's now June 21. So I just changed my last historical month assumption to June. This extends the model historical time series and straight away recognizes that I have data in there and saying, do you want to populate the data from zero for those two, uh, for the income statement and balance sheet for the June month that's now been added. So I can now update. It updates these. If your data is not consistent because you've changed your chart of accounts, it will prompt you to remap whichever items aren't mapped automatically. But in this case, the data hasn't changed. The mapping hasn't changed. So I've automatically got my data in for June. So that number there, 56.8, if I come into zero, and I go to my report and I change this to say June. I go June here, June the 30th, and I run this report. I'd expect this to have in it 56.829, which is consistent with the data that's come through there. And if I now look at my financial statement summary, my, my income statement summary, I've gone in here. The last historical month is June. I now have six months of forecast, six months of historical, and my model, because it's live linked, has automatically updated, which means the monthly roll forward was an automated process. So I hope this video has given you a good understanding of how to get started building your own financial model. You can see it's very, very quick and easy to get a model up and running, live link it to your accounting package and get some numbers in. And that's the real power. But then the next stage is to customize the drivers, add on things like scenario analysis and budget variance analysis. And we're going to cover those off in subsequent videos.